You're listening to the Savoir Fair Audio Experience. Are you ready? The bass is louder. The Savoir Fair Experience is your guide to everything that has to do with lifestyle. From dating, rides, style, and entertainment. All brought to you by the editor of Savoir Fair Magazine, Robert White. Anything goes on this audio experience. So, let's go. It's still the best. All right, guys, welcome to the Savo Fair Audio Experience. We have another great interview today for you, uh, another great guest. So, uh, today we're speaking with uh, Leah Weiss, who is a uh, an attorney in Texas, but she has a very kind of cool marketing perspective on being a lawyer, which is fun and cool. So how are you today, Leah? <laughs> I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, I'm excited to connect with you. I was, um, I got the, you know, the email about you and I was like, yeah, this sounds cool. I definitely want to learn a little bit more. I feel like the law industry or whatever we want to call that is very boring um, and I feel like you have added some spice to this industry a little bit. And that's one of the things that like caught my attention. I was like, okay, well, I want to know more about you and, and your mission on what, how this look. I mean, it almost looks fun, even though you're dealing with personal injury. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for noticing me. We sort of pride ourselves on kind of changing the game in legal marketing. Um, we started, marketing in a very like non-traditional way back in like 2016, 2017. Um, And this was before most lawyers were even marketing on social media. Um, And so as a woman, as, you know, a Latina first generation attorney, I was like, I don't want to market the way other lawyers do. I don't want to seem intimidating. I don't want to seem unapproachable. I want to seem like, relatable you can come to me you can trust me with your problems and so we really geared our marketing toward that goal that's so cool and that's definitely what i want to dive into and talk about a little bit with you but i want to build a little bit of a timeline and kind of give a proper introduction to who you are so maybe you could give me a little background story um you know maybe about your education where you were before you were a lawyer um i saw a couple like obviously Instagram posts and things that you have done that were kind of cool. Right. There was like, you're, you know, obviously you do some talks about the topic. So um, give me a little bit of backstory and then we'll dive right into your uniqueness in being a lawyer. Sure. So I'm born and raised in like deep, deep South Texas. We are pretty much on the Texas Mexico border. Um, very underserved community. Um, you know, very sort of, it feels like a different world down here. It feel it doesn't really feel like the U.S., but it doesn't feel like Mexico either. It feels like this sort of gray area. Um, very beautiful culture, beautiful people, community. Everybody here is so nice. Um, but when I moved to Austin for undergrad, I remember, um, you know, feeling sort of at a disadvantage, feeling inferior, struggling with my self-esteem because I didn't feel that I belonged at, you know, a big university with people all from all over the world who had gone to private schools, who had traveled the world and whose parents were doctors and lawyers. Mm -hmm. So I sort of struggled in undergrad with my identity. Thankfully I was able to, to grow out of it, shake it off and realize that, you know, as a woman from the border, I bring, you know, a lot to the table, just as much, if not more. And so um, I felt really empowered. And then when I graduated from, from college, I was a little bit lost about what I wanted to do in my career. So I ended up taking a job with the Texas legislature, and I worked for a state senator named Wendy Davis. And it was there that I fell in love with the idea of practicing law because I got to see legislators advocate on behalf of their clients. I knew I wanted to be an advocate and the best way for me to achieve that was to go to law school and be an advocate for my clients and my community. So I took the LSAT, applied to law school. I moved to San Antonio to go to law school. I graduated in 2016 and I took the bar exam. I got the bar results in November of 2016 and the very next day decided to open my own law practice. I knew that I wanted to be my own boss. I knew that I wanted to have freedom. I knew that it was going to be really difficult. So 
starting from the ground up, but you know, I'm, I was 26, no kids, not married. So I figured this is the time to do it. And I have zero regrets about that. That's so cool. Good for you. Like what, I mean, in, in the, like the big picture of life, everything you just talked about is awesome. Like even the idea of finding your identity in college, because that's something that people never figure out. Like, the idea that you kind of figured out who you wanted to be and shook off this kind of old person and became this new, I mean, you basically became an influencer in law, period, but very educated as well. I mean, that's 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 a very kind of unique um, unique niche. Like, there's not too many people that are doing things that you are doing, which really makes you stand out, obviously. Um, but obviously the Thank knowledge. You. Yeah. And I like the way that you're, you talked about, you know, being very approachable. Um, I do feel that in the way that you're communicating with me right now, that you're a very approachable person. I have to say like in any situation I've ever been involved with, with a lawyer, it's not the most approachable thing. It's like, <laughs> listen, 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 like they're just like, uh, Hey, it's three bucks, $300 an hour. We don't do free consultations. If you want to talk to me, set an appointment up. And it's always about go, 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 like push, push, push it away and then set an appointment up. Then you can come in and then, you know, for, for whatever fee it is per hour, then you can talk to me. Like they're always kind of have this, I don't know, a little chip on their shoulder in most situations right. that, that where I've met them. And you obviously going on social media and promoting and marketing yourself this way is opening yourself up to a ton, but it's also opening you up to like a very kind of unique um, vibe that you put off. And that's cool. I mean, your videos are fun. I mean, I'm laughing while I'm watching them today. I'm like, ah, oh, this is super cool. I dig these concepts. Um, it's not a very, you're, you're not the frumpy, you know, I'm trying to be polite. Yeah. But <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Yeah. You definitely stand out a little bit. So that's good. Um, so yeah, awesome background. Thanks for the information. Um, and then obviously you got, your law degree, you passed the bar, everything started kind of building. Talk to me about the beginning stages of like having your own firm and, and getting some things off the ground for yourself. So it was, it was really difficult at first. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to paint a pretty picture and make it seem like, you know, I've always lived this glamorous lifestyle or I've always been confident. It was the first I would say three years of starting my law practice were extremely difficult living, you know, barely making ends meet, driving a car that would break down on me, renting a $500 office a month with no windows. I started my law practice with a $200 refurbished computer, not even a brand new computer, <laughs> a $100 printer from Walmart and my cell phone. And that was my office equipment. So I knew that I needed to get my name out there because I knew I was passionate about helping my community, but I didn't have the budget to advertise on billboards and TV commercials or radio that cost, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. Right. So I was like, okay, I have this tool called Facebook and Instagram social media. It's completely free. And there are almost no lawyers advertising on social media because I think back then it was seen as sort of embarrassing or like sort of below lawyers to advertise on social media. Yep. So I was like, you know what? Like, that's not the type of lawyer I want to be anyway. I want to be like approachable. I want people to think of me as like a, just your average person's lawyer. So I started putting out ads on social media, started educating people on what to do if they've been injured, if they've been in a car accident, if they've been injured on the job, things that, you know, weren't their fault. And slowly but surely, I started making a name for myself. Clients started trusting me. And in 2020, about three years after starting my law practice, we were able to secure the largest settlement in the state of Texas for that year. So that was a very reaffirming moment for me. It was sort of, it felt really good to all of the, the naysayers and the people who doubted me because there were a lot of people who told me like, hey, you're embarrassing yourself mm -hmm. posting these videos on TikTok and Instagram. You should really just, you know, stop. You should just get a job. Wow. And this, you know, the personal injury industry is very male dominated women you know don't make it in this industry and there's a reason for that so it was like a very reaffirming moment for me and so I think now I would consider myself you know a respected attorney in my region 
We represent clients throughout the entire state of Texas. We currently represent clients in every single major city in Texas. That's so, awesome. I mean, Tex- yeah, Texas is a huge state. And so I'm very, very proud of the fact that we've been able to expand our name and our reputation throughout all of Texas. But I will say that those beginning years were really difficult. Um, you know, sometimes I would sit outside of the courthouse in my car and cry because I had no idea what I was doing. I was learning how to run a business and I was learning how to be a lawyer because, you know, once you graduate from law school, you don't necessarily know how to practice law. That's why a lot of people get a job to learn the ropes of practicing law, save money, and then they start their law practice. And I had never run a business before, so I was wearing all of these hats, and it was extremely overwhelming. And it's not like I had much to show for it either because I wasn't making very much money. But I really believed that I could lead in this industry, and I felt like, hey, I have something different to offer. Mm -hmm. So I just continued forward, pushed forward. I had some great mentors. I'm not saying that everybody was a naysayer. I had some really great mentors, great lawyers who helped me, who taught me the ropes. And so here I am today, almost eight years later. And like I said, I have no regrets. (laughs) Don't say it like that. You said, you said eight (laughs) years later, like you almost rolled your eyes at yourself. And you're, (laughs) yeah. I kind yeah. of miss the days when my clients were like, I think you're too young to be a lawyer. <laughs> now nobody says that to me anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's understandable. I mean, it is yeah. obviously a male dominant kind of uh, field in general, but then personal injury even more so. Um, and that's that's understandable to me. But congrats on like just defying some odds here, which is really cool. And what was the um, you said that there was a case where you got the largest settlement of that year? Yes. OK. Is that something you're allowed to say publicly or no? Yes. Okay. So that particular case settled in 2020 for $7.9 million. And it was a really bad construction case where my client was injured on the job through no fault of his own. He sustained, you know, life changing injuries. And so we were really, really proud to be able to get him you know, the money that we did and make sure that, you know, he's taken care of, um, you know, money was put into a trust. We helped him set up that trust so that, you know, he gets the care that he needs for the rest of of his life. So that Mm -hmm. was a really um, heartwarming moment for me. It was very rewarding. That's awesome. Yeah. That's, that's really a great, a great achievement for sure. Um, So one of the things that I saw here was like, there was this, I mean, you mentioned this a little bit, you started your first office with you know, your hundred dollar printer, a couple hundred bucks for a refurbished <laughs> computer. There was no windows in your office. And now you have clients in every city in the state of Texas. I mean, that's a huge, every huge, major city, every yeah. major city. Okay. So every then, major city. <laughs> I mean, that's a zero to hero moment for me. Um, as, as far as things go. So like, where does that grind come from? Did you have to expand and bring a team in? I mean, I think I saw some really great, there's definitely some solid people on your team that I see on social with you. Um, how, how do you get the kind of growth that you had, um, going from, you know, where you started to now? I mean, eight years is a long time, but it's not really that long when you think about being an entrepreneur and starting your own business. Right. So I terrified of hiring my first employee, because if you think about it, that person depends on you for their livelihood. They depend on you to, you know, help support their family, to pay their bills, their car payment, all of that. And the thought of that was terrifying because I thought, okay, I'm going to hire somebody and like, if they don't get paid, it's on me, you know? Right. But, um, you know, I knew I needed the help because I was slowly but surely getting my name out there. And so I, I hired my first employee and she's still with me. Awesome. She is now my, my office manager and she developed a lot of the systems and processes that we use today for our clients. And so now we are at a, we're a team of about 10 um, and so my husband is also a lawyer, but he and I don't work together. He has his own separate law firm, but we do co-counsel on a lot of cases together. So he's sort of like my partner in all of this, even though we're not officially under the same law firm, we will co-counsel yeah. on certain cases where, um, you know, more than one lawyer is needed and then his staff will also jump in and help as well. So we're kind ca- we're kind of a big team when you, when you think about both me and my husband together. Yeah. But he and I didn't get married until two years ago. So the 
the growth that I had, you know, was, I don't mean to toot my own horn. horn on your own shoulders, it yeah. Yeah, it was <laughs> yeah. on my own shoulders. To your own horn, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm completely okay yeah. with the idea that, that, yeah, I built my own practice way before I ever got married. <laughs> and I think, I think that a lot of people have this misconception, like, oh, well, her husband's a lawyer, and he's, you know, six, seven years older than me. He's been practicing longer. He must have helped her you know, grow her practice and like, no, actually we didn't, you know, I didn't get married until I was 32. I started my law practice when I was 26. Right. So, um, you know, the, I think that there's this misconception about me that, you know, maybe he helped me or, and there's nothing wrong with, you know, partners who, who start together or, you know, parents who step in and help. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I just, you know, wasn't fortunate enough to have parents who could help me financially they were extremely emotionally helpful and supportive. There were time, you know, times when I wanted to give up. My parents were always there for me. And even though they couldn't give me a business loan or anything like that, mm-hmm. uh, I feel like the emotional support is just as, if not more important, you know, to really build your self-confidence and your self-esteem. So now we have um, a team of about 10 and we recently bought, a brand new 11,000 square foot building and what's great what's great about this building is that it's a former strip club (laughs) we (laughs) this strip club went out of business in during covid and it's right off the expressway it's great visibility and one day I was driving home from work and I was like you know what I think I want to buy this building I want to take this you know strip club and turn it into my office and so it made a lot of local headlines, you know, lawyer buys former strip club, she's turning it into her headquarters. And of course, there were people in the comments saying, oh, now we know how she made her money. She was a stripper. That's how she got through law school. All oh, that stuff, geez. Which, yeah. <laughs> I know. I find it really, I find it funny. I'm able to laugh at those sorts of things just because, you know, I, I've experienced it and received those comments for so many years now. But we're in the process of renovating this 11,000 square foot building, and we are scheduled to move into the building in about January or February, so just a few months away. So yeah, it really is like a full circle moment, renting a tiny office, no windows, to now having this massive building, a former strip club, made local headlines. It's, It's really rewarding to think about. Yeah, that's super cool. And I was going to ask you what like kind of big things were coming down the pipeline, but that's really the biggest thing right now is this new location. And I think the most recent post on your Instagram account is kind of you guys playing some little role play there about being in the office and what it's going to be like when you get into that spot. <laughs> so, I mean, that's, yes. yeah, that's just super adorable. So I'm looking for like the more <clears throat> you have to do another transition video where it's you talking on the phone, <laughs> standing there in this like ruggedy you know, ripped down before and after, you know what I mean? So then when, when you do the transition, it's got to be you in a completely different outfit and the whole new building behind you. That's a great idea. I'm definitely going to do that. (laughs) All right. Very cool. (laughs) Well, so you're, you're mainly focused on personal injury. Um, obviously that's a big like category that you guys work in. Can you just give me some like bullet points for that? Like some of the stuff that you guys, um, would take in for potential clients. Maybe there's someone in Texas that's listening to this right now that might need your service. Sure. We take any injury that was caused through the negligence of a third party. So a car accident, that is not your fault, a work accident, that's not your fault, a slip and fall accident, that's not your fault, Um, products liability, defective products, Um, any any injury to where, you know, we can find a responsible third party and hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. So I would say the the bulk of our work are car accidents and 18-wheeler accidents because those just happen, you know, all the time. Uh, but we also do a lot of premise liability, a lot of work, workplace accidents. So those are that is 100% what we do. We don't take any cases that don't involve personal injury. So okay. uh, that's something we pride ourselves on because this is our specialty. It's what we eat, live, breathe every single day. We don't, you know, waste any sort of manpower or energy on anything else other than personal injury, which I think is really important if you're looking 
for a personal injury lawyer, I think you want to hire somebody who's, you know, this is what they do. This is what they specialize in. And the analogy that I usually give is, would you go to a general practitioner doctor for brain surgery? No, you wouldn't. You would go to a brain surgeon if you needed mm. brain surgery. Obvious. You wouldn't go <laughs> to a heart. Yeah, right. If you if you needed heart surgery, you wouldn't go to a brain surgeon. You'd go to a heart surgeon. And so in yep. the legal field, I think of it as the same way. If you are, if you are um, alleged to have com- committed a crime, you wouldn't go to a personal injury lawyer, you would go to a criminal defense lawyer. So there's a lot of general practitioner law firms out there, which is fine. And, you know, I, this is not me bashing them at all. But if you're going to choose a personal injury lawyer, if it were me or my loved ones, I would want them to choose somebody who does this day in and day out. Yeah, makes sense to me too. Oh, very cool. I mean, so one more little logistical question, because this is obviously you've, you've opened up a new can of worms here with the idea of being so active on social media um, over on Instagram. Looks like you're rocking like 14,000 followers, which is incredible. And then Facebook was pretty strong as well. Is there a different process to like a unique system you had to create or something that takes a lead from social media into the office? Is there a different way that you guys do that? That's you know, abnormal from someone just running a commercial and getting a phone mm-hmm. call? Yes. So our my business Instagram is uh, called Texas Abogada, and that is Abogada means lawyer in Spanish. And then I have my personal Instagram where I sort of focus on more uh, personal content, content that makes me relatable. I don't really focus on lawyer content. Mm-hmm. And so I actually have a larger following on my personal page and on there, I focus on just being, you know, your normal everyday first generation lawyer going through life ups and downs and sharing my personal life, sharing a personal side of myself so that people can feel like they really know me. And then on my business page, that is a hundred percent employee run. So I let my employees get creative with it, but I do tell them, don't sell people. People don't want to be sold. People are tired of seeing advertisements on social media. We're Mm -hmm. tired of scrolling through social media and seeing ads for everything. And it's to the point where when we see an ad, we kind of just keep scrolling, you know? We don't want, yeah, we, it's just like a turnoff when we, when somebody's constantly trying to sell themselves. So we focus on like showing, you know, a personal side of the office. We have an office cat. She makes a cameo in a lot of our videos. The girls have fun with it. They, you know, talk about that we introduce the girls and what they do and what their hobbies are. We do fun little skits. We, it's, we try and make it as fun as possible to where people get on our page and they're either going to learn something they're going to laugh or they're going to feel inspired. The last thing we want is for them to feel like we're trying to sell them constantly. Right. And I know a lot of lawyers are like, well, how are they going to know what you do? Or how are you going to get clients if you're not selling yourself? I, the way I see it is if you brand yourself well enough and people feel like they know you and they like you, they're going to remember you when you're involved in an accident or when they're involved in an accident, or if, you know, they've been, accused of a crime or, you know, they're going through a divorce, whatever your, your niche area is, if you've built that trust with your following on social media, they're going to remember you. You don't have to sell yourself every single day. You know, every once in a while, it's fine to remind people what you do. We like to post, you know, certain milestones like, oh, this, this month was a $2 million settlement month. You know, we got $2 million in settlements or, you know, we have a, um, we have a red folder that we hand all of our settlements in. So we do like fun little skits with the red folder. And so we just have, we try and have fun with it because I feel like people don't want to be sold. 
Mm-hmm. And so we try not to do that. We try to, you know, show people, hey, we're real people and we want to help you. So give us a call if you need us. Yeah. I mean, that's a marketing 101 basics right there. You just dropped on us. I mean, that's that's kind of the idea is that <clears throat> in social media in general, using these things to kind of be natural. People love who people like to do business with people and not right. com- and not companies. So if it's more personalized, then they feel like, oh yeah, I definitely want to touch base with Leah. There's a completely different aspect to Leah Weiss Law Firm compared to who you are. And that's, that's an understandable kind of concept, but I like the idea that people are going to feel comfortable enough to approach you because you've kind of opened up the door to your life and put it on social and, you know, on your personal stuff. You know, you're showing your husband, your business stuff, all the little things that you're kind of involved with. I mean, that's 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 very cool. I think a lot of people appreciate that stuff. Thank so, you. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the goal. Absolutely. Well, I really appreciate you kind of taking some time out of your crazy busy life to to come on here and, and chat with us a little bit and give us a little bit of information about you. I'm definitely looking forward to kind of writing the article up and getting it out there for people to check out. Um but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm glad we got some time with you for sure. It's very cool, the concept of using social media as a marketing, as a lawyer. Um, I, I don't know of many other people. You know, I've been on social for years. I've been playing around with these platforms for years. You might be the only lawyer that I've ever met um, that is doing some of this oh, stuff. <laughs> and, and I've seen a lot of people, but never like kind of embracing social in this way. So, you know, continue to do what you're doing. I hope you have a great success. Um, but yes, thank you, thanks again so much for your time today, Leah. Thank you for having me. I had so much fun chatting with you. It was, it was, um, it was a lot of fun. So thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. Thanks. Thank you for listening to the show. Please take a minute to head over to www.savfair.com and subscribe to our publication.